Good morning. My name is Dan Harris. I'm a beekeeper. Today, as I have been doing for the past week, I am pouring candles. My favorite are these colonial tapers, 10 inch colonial tapers. The mold is made by Man Lake. I like these a lot because they're elegant. You, know, you put them in a put them in a candle holder. Well, I need to trim the bottom of this one, but you put them in a candle holder. Put them on your table for your uh, for the your holiday table, your Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner table, or if you're having dinner and with a, maybe your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and you want a little ambiance, they're great for that. They also are um, good if the power goes off and you need a little supplemental lighting. So they're, they're really an all around great candles. And I've got enough uh, left, enough wax left to do, oh, another 30 or 40 and I'll probably pour mostly these. I may pour a few votives, which are pretty popular with, uh, with my customers. I've got all kinds of other candle molds. I've got, you know, cute little animals and a lot of other things, but um, I really like these a lot. My customers tend to like them a lot. I don't have any problem selling them at the farmer's market. And I like the practicality of them, just kind of fits me uh, in what I like. And the other candles, the more specialty candles, I tend to, I tend to do those on an as requested basis. I also tend to pour these little beeswax bars that are um, about an ounce a piece. And I sell a lot of those to the local soap makers and skin and cream lotion makers in the community and so those go pretty well too. The way I do this, just to give you a sense of it, um, I'm using a, I've got this little heating tabletop stove if you will. It's just a two burner, two element stove. It would be something you'd use if you were like in a dorm room in college just to heat soup or maybe you know some kind of incidental like that uh, rather than a full bowl and, and it works pretty well for this or relatively inexpensive and this is a double boiler in a kitchen these are usually used for fixing uh, like chocolate or cheese sauces where you want the molten you want them to, to be you know liquid but you don't want them to get scorched and so it has an outer perimeter it has a it has a double wall around and the inner wall is filled with water um, that limits the temperature that it's going to get to and also balances the heat going to it. So it keeps me from scorching the candle wax or setting the house on fire. The wax, my wax is melting and this is what I use to thread my wick into the molds. <laughs> it's it's a piece of wire steel we usually in beekeeping use these things I don't know if this is going to show up or not but we usually use this kind of wire in beekeeping for um, wiring wax foundation into frames and I just cut a section of it um, and what I do is I impale some wick this is a 2-0 wick is what it's called, which is the appropriate wick for these uh, candles that I'm, these colonial taper candles. So what I do is I impale this onto this piece of steel and like, well, so, like so. And then I take my needle nose pliers and I wrap this around like so. 
and that's so that this can enter the the small hole in the base of the candle mold and here is one of those molds this is the top it's divided I'll show you in a minute but I'm going to show you how I thread one and then we'll do maybe a, a shorter term oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'll show you how I do one differently as well all right so I, I insert the wire into the where the um, actual wick hole in the base of the candle mold and I thread it up through and I pull it like so and in it goes and I pull it through like so and as you can see it comes out this end and then what I'm going to do is, since I've got six of these that I'm using right now, so when I pour, I pour six at a time, rather than having to rethread this whole piece of iron, um, this, this steel, steel wire, I just keep it attached and then I just series up these molds, just kind of stack them and keep and continue to um, feed the, the wick into them. Like so, and, and we'll do this for all six. So I daisy chained them together, threaded them all up with their wicks. Now, what I'll do is I'll add a rubber band because they, they're split right up here at the top, allow you to remove the candle once it's finished. And this holds it together tightly so that those seams don't show up on the candle. And so we'll do that. And we'll put a little bobby pin right through here, like so. Well, sort of like so. Pull it up, center it up, and we'll do that for each of them. So, the next thing I do is I'm getting very close to time to uh, pour the candles. This pouring pitcher sits on my smaller burner on this tabletop stove. So I turn it on to heat up the base of that and melt any wax that's in there. And when I start adding wax to it, it won't, it won't quickly coagulate in the bottom and so I want it warm enough that, it, that, that the wax stays melted in it. Number two, I really, 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 really like this particular mold release. I don't have any kind of paid promotion for it. So um, it's called Smooth On Universal Mold Release. And I'll tell you, um, I've tried a lot of different mold releases. And where this one really passed my test anyway, was when I was pouring some of those jumbo pine cone molds. I don't know if you've seen those, but they're this huge pine cone. has all the little tabs coming out of the pine cone. And every time I'd pour them, just 99% of the time, or surely 90% of the time, the, some of the tabs would get broken off when I tried to get the candles out of the mold. And I tried a lot of different things. I tried to you know, freeze them after they had been poured and cooled and uh, 
a lot of different things. But this stuff, when I started using this, just by accident, I got a can of this, and I started getting a lot more consistent results, and I could probably get 70 or 80 percent of them out of those molds consistently without breaking anything. So, kind of sold me on this stuff. All right, enough for the promotion. So, I'm going to take all of these colonial tapers, and I'm going to spray some mold release into each. And... So having done that, next I'll make sure these mold, these uh, wicks are centered. So I'll pull that little tab on the bottom up, center this up here, and just pull it snug enough that I can see that the candle, the, the wick is actually centered, like so. And continue to do them, get them all done. So those guys are pretty much centered up and, and after I do my first pour I'll, I'll kind of recenter them but they ought to be pretty close to start with. That's kind of the whole idea there. All right, so I take this guy, it's been heating just a little bit, probably not as much as I'd like but it'll be okay and I'm going to fill it. I like the small pouring pitchers a little easier to manage and I'll I'd probably fill it maybe a third certainly less than a half with uh, molten wax and that too makes it a little easier to manage right. so then after having done all of that centered up the wicks got this a third to a half full of wax I'll gradually pour, relatively gradually, pour the uh, wax, and I try to pour it down the wick. And I try to pour it down the wick so I don't get as much air when it, you know, hits the bottom and splashes around. I don't want that. I want as little air in in this as is possible. These molds, in particular. Um, have a have a habit of <sighs> capturing air at the neck of the the between the base and the candle itself, and that will cause it to fracture there when you remove it from the mold. Or actually, it's fractured before you even ever try to move it remove it from the mold. There's the last one. Refill them as the wax cools and as the wick absorbs wax, of course it draws it back down into the candle and so while it's still molten I'll pour a little bit more to finish filling them, like so, and it just takes a dab, just a dab. The uh, colonial tapers, again I, I cut this, the main reason I cut the bottom of these off like so is so that I have less wick to pull back up through the candle and it just uh, is that much less likely that I'll cause any kind of damage pulling the can candle out. There's just that much less resistance. Generally what I do is I remove those bobby pins and peel off any wax that might be on the top of the mold which is actually the base of the candle and that'll go back into the melting pot just for uh, recycling. It's not a huge amount of wax but you know after hundreds of candles it's a little bit and I don't want to waste any of it. That's the long and short of it. I've talked about how much I like my wax and I've got, I've got a couple beekeeping friends who uh, when they see my wax 
they always ask if I'd like to sell any, and I say, you know, I, I really, I don't want to wholesale it to somebody else to make candles or whatever. I, I just would just as soon do it myself, um, and so I don't. <laughs> Long and short of it, I don't. I try to be a nice guy, but you know, I don't always don't always do what people would like me to do. So anyway, I've removed the rubber band around so I can spread the uh, top of the mold and so we will pull that baby out and ta-da there she is about as near to perfect as it can be um, and I got five more of those to do I've got the boiler warming up for another batch and uh, this is the story of my life right now. <laughs> this, it's a good story. I, I'm not complaining. It's just what I'm doing right now. Um, so that's basically how I do my candles. And I'm sure I'll think of other things later. But at the moment, uh, this, is, this is what I'm doing. Uh, and, and it's a rainy day out. So I'm going to be doing indoor things. This is just one of many. And um, yeah. Thanks for watching.